Our fourth speaker. I love it when you handwrite your so I phone pulled up, you know why it's your fault, not mine. <laughs> Toastmasters uh, Tim Barkley giving his fourth speech out of the confident communicator. There, I know I can read it. To grow your stages. It has taken him a year and a half to get this far, so he makes it a, a, makes it a great time to start picking up the pace. Well. Welcome, Postmaster Tim Parker. I write really small and I actually get right to a big form, so sorry about that. Fellow <laughs> <laughs> Postmasters and guests, good morning. Roy, get ready for this one. <laughs> so, I actually wish I knew earlier in life, from a very young age, as early as when I started talking, how truly important it is to master the art of communication. So it's just so important because it can lead to so much success in life. And I'm not just talking about financial success, although it definitely helps. I mean having deep, meaningful relationships, which is virtually impossible without communication skills. So I recently was at a seminar, and a gentleman was on stage talking about stages. My man Alex was there with me. And he was saying how you need to grow the size of your stage to continue to be able to sell more of your products and services. And then it dawned on me that all throughout life, we're always on stages, whether if it's a stage in front of one person with our spouse, a friend or whatever, or all the way up to hundreds of thousands of people. And I'm here today to talk to you about how I've personally grown in parallel to the growth of my stages. So throughout the majority of my life, my stages were unimpressively small and insignificant. Uh, throughout grade school and college, those stages only consisted of primarily friends, family. You don't have to be an expert on those stages because those people already know you, they like you, so it's not difficult to succeed there. Just the thought of public speaking really scared me and it gave me anxiety. Like if I had to do a group presentation at work or at school, it would just make me super, super nervous. And while I was sitting here preparing for this speech, it reminded me when I first came to Toastmasters, I'm sure there was at least one time where I was maybe out there and then made excuses to myself and then just left. Like, had to get to work for something, even though everything was fine, like I could stay. And I don't know, I just, it gave me anxiety. So I think I may have even had like mild social anxiety. I potentially still could have it today. I guess I just deal with it a little better. So I just remember describing it to people as like feeling lethargic and out of it and you, like spacey so you're trying to talk to someone and it's just like wah 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 like you're all you can think about is how out of it you feel so it's hard enough trying to listen to them but to be able to put together like a decent response it was so difficult and even throughout the majority of my working years I grew a landscaping company it was 10 years those stages were small too I mean it was me and a handful of employees so when I was up on that stage some of them did, weren't even completely fluent in English, so I was on stage and they didn't even, they only knew half of what I was saying. Aside from that, it was speaking with clientele, and you didn't have to be a Tony Robbins to talk about like a landscape quote, or checking in, hey, you forgot to pay the invoice last month. So, the true turn for me was, I'd say, the end of 2016, I realized I just wanted more for myself. I wanted bigger and better things, so sold that company and then decided to take a plunge into corporate America. I got a, uh, my mortgage license and went into a sales job, and it came crashing on me, it hit me like a charging bowl of anxiety, because I realized that I wasn't going to succeed in my new endeavor unless I could get at least a little better at communication, and it, it just it scared me. So I grew, I knew I had to grow my stages to be able to succeed, and thinking about the early on in my career, I wouldn't have wanted to work with me. I, I wasn't very convincing on the phone. I, if I was a talking to a realtor or a, a referral partner, like I wouldn't want to send me anyone. I just didn't have the confidence at all. To make everything worse, my biggest supporter, my partner, my wife, she continuously kept telling me that I am just awful at communication. <laughs> <laughs> Aside from learning my new craft, because I wasn't going to be able to grow my business unless I knew my business, aside from that, nothing was more important than getting better at communication. 
So as time went on, I gained more experience. I knew the inside and outs of my industry, and I felt more comfortable. So naturally, my confidence started picking up. I, my, all my stages were still small at that point, but the level of significance started to slowly increase because I wasn't just talking about, hey, do this landscaping job, or here, I, I'll do it for $200 a month. I was helping people with, with, for a lot of people, it's the biggest financial investment of their life, purchasing a home. So naturally, that built, built a little more confidence, and I, I could feel that I was getting better, and, and the big mo was picking up. And if anyone's read The Compound Effect, you know I'm talking about momentum, so you, you feel it, and, and you start to get better, and you believe that you can get it even better. So I knew I wanted to continue this path, so this is when I started to do <coughs> Toastmasters on a regular basis, and I even went as far as forming a group at work, so like six to ten of the coworkers will get together on Tuesday, and then that's another opportunity for me to be on stage and grow and help them grow. I formed a BNI in August, and we're up to 30 members now. So every Wednesday afternoon, I'm there. I have the spotlight for 60 seconds to try and make some kind of impact in front of those 30 people on that stage. I have given a presentation at my work trying to explain to my coworkers that there's nothing more important than exceeding expectations at work. I gave a first-time home buyer seminar. So all these opportunities for me to be on stage, it just continues to grow me, and I'm more confident. And I want to continue to do these types of presentations. And, and I still honestly have a really, really long way to go. Uh, ultimately, I'm not saying I'd like to be a world-renowned public speaker, although that would be awesome. And every one of us in here have that potential. But what I do want is I'm just going to enjoy the growth. It, it's exciting. And ultimately, what I do want is I just want to be able to be on stage, whether it's one person with my wife here in front of this room or maybe hundreds, thousands of people, I don't know, but I want to just be able to be 100% present, no anxiety, well, I know you can't completely not have anxiety, we all get nervous when we speak, but I want it to be very minimal, and at the end of the day, I just want to be able to have an impact. Thank you.